Hello everyone, in this video I'd like to give you guys the top 10 differences I found between Tim Tim and Pokemon games. So number one, and this is really centric to how Tim Tim operates as a... The number of monsters involved in every fight differs between Pokemon and Tim Tim. So in Tim Tim, every fight generally is a 2v2. Occasionally you'll run into a wild encounter where there is only one enemy Tim Tim. But the game revolves around these 2v2 battles, which allow for things such as synergy moves, where if you have the right ally on your team, it's going to be relevant because it will make your moves stronger. And when you have to deal with two opponents at the same time, it really changes up the dynamic of the fight. It's not going to be as straightforward as your guy has the right move, which beats the other guy, because maybe they have two different types on the enemy side, so you have to worry about both of them at the same time. And I think that generally makes for a little bit more interesting of a fight. Now, Pokemon games, in contrast, have generally been 1v1 fights. In some of the more later games, they did add in 2v2 fights, and there are 3v3s as well. Um, generally, though, when you are just playing through the storyline, stuff is 1v1. It doesn't really centralize around those 2v2 and 3v3 fights in the main story, though those do exist as an option for competitive play. So number two, completely online gameplay. In Temtem, you can see other players and interact with them directly in global chat. However, you can't just run around and randomly challenge anyone you see to a battle at will. That would probably get really annoying if they did allow you to do that. So the fact that it's online has upsides and downsides. Because all of the important data is going to get stored on the server, theoretically that would help to prevent cheating. You can't exactly just go hack the game save file and give yourself like level 100s or something. However, it does mean that your internet connection needs to be stable. If for some reason the internet goes out, you're going to lose connection of the game and you won't be able to keep playing until you reconnect. Though the reconnect system is pretty decent inside the game, it doesn't drop the game completely. As long as you can reconnect your internet, you can just hit the reconnect button in game and resume playing again. Okay, number three. Temtem's played on the PC, whereas Pokemon games exist on Nintendo systems, uh, such as the Nintendo Switch and the latest Sword and Shield game. So probably one of the biggest reasons why people would get drawn into playing Temtem in the first place is that it allows you to play on the PC on Steam. Certain people may prefer to play games on the PC, or they might just not really want to go out and buy a whole separate console in order to play a couple of games. Number four. Harder difficulty inside of Temtem, especially with the boss fights. So as someone who's played a significant portion of the Pokemon games going all the way back to the original Red and Blue, I actually found some of the fights to be relatively difficult, especially the first Dojo fight. So I could attribute that to several things. The Temtems I decided to go into that fight weren't particularly strong. Then again, it's not like most of the early game options are particularly great. I also decided not to go into the fight using my starter. I just don't particularly like to see myself going around the map with exactly the same guy that everybody else has, one of those three starters. But also, some of the Temtems that she has on her team are really crazily powerful. Like, this one move, Tsunami, is quite devastating. But anyway, the point is, that was the first dojo. So the difficulty level on the main storyline is definitely at a higher grade uh, than a typical Pokemon game. You can still overcome it in similar ways, like going into fights with a bunch of items ready, or just grinding through levels until you can just win purely on statistics. But I would say don't be surprised if it takes you a few attempts to actually beat fights like that. Okay, difference number five, quality of life improvements. So in Temtem, there is actually a lot less clicking through text manually than Pokemon games, especially the older ones. In older games like Pokemon Fire Red, there was a lot more enter button pressing, so it would be like enter, 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 because you're just going through all of the text on screen and you have to manually go past every bit of it. And Tim Tim, a lot of the text just kind of shows up on the screen and then goes past automatically, such as when you take your Tim Tims to the machine in order to restore all of their health to full. Another example is that once you have attacked a enemy Tim Tim with a move that either does double damage or half damage, It'll show that for the future attacks. So before you select your move and commit it to attack, it'll show you if it's red for half damage or green for double damage. This is information you already know, of course, but the fact that the UI kind of remembers it for you uh, is just another quality of life improvement. So these little things just make the game experience a little bit better, a little more fluid. Okay, number six. So Tim Tim is a newer series, obviously. There's only one Tim Tim game as of now. 
And that means that there's going to be a lot less Temtems compared to Pokemon games. So, now that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, in terms of Pokemon, they have gotten so many that it is actually really hard to remember every single one. But since Temtem is a game that's online and goes through patches, they are planning to add more Temtems as the months go on. The game is still in early access, so it's not at completion yet. Just be aware that in Temtem you won't have quite as much selection as you would in the newer Pokemon games, spanning all the Pokemon that have existed in the past 20 plus years. Okay, number 7. Temtem runs on a stamina system, and then in Pokemon, moves have power points. So power points are basically the number of times you can use a move before you can no longer use that move in Pokemon. And every move has a set amount, like 5 or 10, so if you have a move like Hydro Pump, which has 5 PP, then you use it five times, you can't use it again. But then you can still use your other moves. But in Temtem, every Temtem has stamina, and it does vary depending on Temtem to Temtem, so different Temtems have more stamina than others. But when you use moves that cost a certain stamina amount, usually correlating to the power level of the move, and when your Temtem runs out of stamina, then it's no longer going to be able to do moves, really. You have two options as you get to that zero stamina point. One is to use one last move to overexert your Temtem, and any extra stamina cost turns into damage to your Temtem. Um, and the other option is to wait around a little longer in order to restore some stamina back to your Temtem and not take any of that overexertion damage. Also, if you do use a move and put your Temtem into overexertion, then they're going to be unable to do anything on the following turn. So, the stamina tends to be a lot more relevant than power points in Pokemon because you run out of stamina really quickly. Like, usually in a regular fight, you will get close to zero stamina, unless it's just a wild encounter. So, you do have to manage your stamina resources. Power points in Pokemon, usually, it, it's really only relevant if you are going a long time without going back to a Pokemon Center. So, if you're doing fight after fight after fight, eventually you might run out of power points on a move. But the stamina is much more of a core part of how Temtem operates. Because the Temtem running out of stamina is pretty much going to not be very useful uh, for the rest of that fight, you're generally going to need to rely on swapping out to some of the other Temtems unless you want to spend money on using an item to restore the stamina of your Temtem like a tonic. Next up difference number 8. So inside of Temtem you're able to customize your character both at character creation and with in-game stores where you're able to buy additional customization options. So even at character creation, you're at least able to choose between different hair colors and eye colors and that kind of thing. Now when it came to Pokemon, for most of the older games, at most you were really only able to pick a name and pick a gender for your character. I'm not 100% sure about the newer one, Sword and Shield. I haven't gotten around to trying those out yet. Uh, but generally with Pokemon games, there just wasn't a lot of character customization in that way. So, difference number 9. You can swap out your abilities anytime. You don't have to go to a special guy in order to change the moves which your Tim Tim knows. If they have learned it once, then you can just access it on your team menu and swap in any of the abilities that they have already learned. That's really handy because if you ever decide you want to have that move back on the list that you actually take into a battle, you don't have to go through a lot of trouble in order to relearn the move in the future and you don't need to worry about accidentally overriding a move that you really wanted to keep. Okay, difference number 10, uh, attack delays. So certain moves, and a lot of moves honestly, you have to wait at least a turn or two before they're actually going to be active in battle. So fast moves will be able to be used on the turn you bring a Temtem out, but some of the more powerful ones you're going to have to wait on. And that is an interesting dilemma between do you want to have a Temtem hit the field where it would become powerful later on, or do you want it to have an immediate impact and try to defeat your opponent's Temtems before they can get to that point where they're able to use the biggest move. So that's going to be it for my video of the top 10 differences I found between Temtem and Pokemon gameplay. So thanks for watching to the end, and I will see you guys in my future video content.